Chris. Python uh, hardware news. Okay. All right, so we're going to do this one a little different this week. This week, I wanted to... I picked a story out of the newsletter there's so and much. the video. There's a lot that I think that's interesting. So mm. uh, this is a new board. They called it a SBC small bar computer, but it's actually just a microcontroller yes. board. Yes. And um, why don't you talk about why this is interesting? I'm just going to do one sentence about why it's interesting, but you, 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 go for you it. have go more. First. So here's, here's why this board's interesting. Why is it interesting? It's the next chapter on how electronic manufacturers are, the, the trend that we see, are sending out dev boards. And that is, it comes with a scripting language, and the scripting language happens to be Python. Yeah. So tell us about this. What is this? Well, I think it's interesting because I, I buy a lot of eval boards. <laughs> like, I have, I have many eval boards, and I, I use them for INMPI. And there's one thing that's kind of universal about a valve board. They always, you know, they're always kind of expensive. They're this big, they're expensive, and they require a giant and, tool chain that's a mess? Well, no, they actually don't even require a tool chain. Usually you're stuck with some Windows software. Usually it's, it's only mm. one platform, Windows software. Sometimes, you know, some are now doing multi-platform. But if you even have a Mac or Linux, usually you're out of luck. And it's kind of a little clunky, and it feels a little bad for the companies because it feels like every eval board, they have to sort of start from the beginning and, like, design the whole, like user interface just to like talk to this chip and what I thought was interesting about Trinamic is you know we featured them and they make these really great stepper drivers um they want people to try the stepper drivers they are a stepper driver chip company not a windows GUI software company right like what are they good at yeah. stepper drivers what are they probably not so good at windows software and so if you wanted to have a way for developers to be able to quickly test out um your stepper drivers or your like industrial control dri control drivers using something like a pi board might be really useful because you can like give them scripts and you don't need an ide and you don't need like a you know a web tool or like a gui tool you just tell them hey drag and drop this thing open up a REPL using a serial port yeah. and you can you well, can you're a val board in your computer it'll show up as a usb drive yeah like that's like that's number one like oh my gosh and then using any text editor or ide you yeah. edit the Python file. And the thing is, is that this is not that different than, you know, what we just we realized with Adabox and with doing our electronics. It's like there was a limit. Like we actually couldn't get people going with Arduino. Like it was just too limiting because it was like you have to install Arduino. And some people are like, I'm on a Chromebook. And I'm like, OK. Or they're like, I don't have a Minx. I can't install software. OK. Or like, you know, they're at a library. Right. It's like, so how can you. Or, you know, they're on a parent's they, computer. They the parents don't want them to They can't software. download software, but they can edit a text file. Or they have an IDE that they're already allowed to use. Right. So how do they? How could they edit a script? So the things that make it easy for students, you know, this is, it's funny because it's like the, you know, I always tell the joke of like, well, you know, we make it really easy for like students and kids to use CircuitPython, which means it's also possible for PhDs to use it, right? Because it's actually like kind of the same user base <laughs> in a sense. Um, the same stuff that a, a very... Like a very advanced engineer and a beginner, it's actually the same user experience they want. Like I actually don't want to install a tool chain. Like when I was like in that medium stage, I was like, yeah, I'm going to install tool chain. I'm going to explore this thing. Now it actually like gives me the willies, right? I don't want to um, get yeah. MSP430 like to take over my computer. I just want to like have a thing do a thing. I just want to test it out to see how it works and get a feel for it because then I'm going to integrate it into my own product. So I think I think MicroPython is a good use case for this. This is actually like basically a respin of the yeah. Pi board. They call it Motion Pi, and even in the name, they're Pi. like, "Hey, Python." Pi. So this is happening. It's an STM thirty two F four hundred five. So you work with Circuit Python too, and it's basically just kind of like a, a, they took the Pi board and they just sort of added all this other stuff to it to make it good yeah. for industrial automation. And it's probably just running MicroPython like plain. Um, because, you know, the pins are, are, the, are the same thing. And then it's just got, like, the buttons and SD cards. It's, it's, it's split apart and designed just for automation. I think it's interesting. It's interesting because this is actually the one use case that's very good for. I always thought, like, eval boards were such a waste of resources for a company that does not, they're not an eval board company. They're a stepper driver company. They should not be making eval board software. They should be making yeah. stepper drivers. There's more people that can do Python code, too, than embedded Let's see. You know, yeah, there's yeah. like there's a there's a there's a bigger community audience and and talent pool as well. So, anyways, this is interesting to us. This is like, you'll look back at this in years and be like, oh yeah, I saw this on like. Ask and then an it's engineer. like the software's on GitHub. Right. It's very yeah. interesting to me because, Trinamic, you know, they they just got bought by Maxim, but they're not a big company. 
right? Mm-hmm. This isn't TI. So it's interesting to see like these small scale companies, you know, are they like like Digi, like Trinamic, they're gonna start doing micro Python and, and embedded Python and scripting languages. Yeah. And then seeing how, because they're more more agile than the bigger companies, will it trickle up until eventually you're going to see, um, you know, big companies use Python on hardware as a way of doing rapid development for their chips. All right. Interesting. Um, other things in the newsletter, because that is in there, is uh, yeah. we, six point two point oh four beta. Please try it out. Go to Adafruit. We are oh, sorry. Go to circuitpython.org/downloads. Fixing bugs, like. Yeah. Like bananas. We so love fixing bugs. RP2040 fixes are the big ones. Um, ESP32S2 fixes yeah. as well. Uh, a lot of USB stuff. Uh, keep putting in any bug reports. We, we are patching and preparing. And we're going to move on to 7. Yeah. If you um, got a... Uh, Circuit Python. A Open Hardware Summit um, goodie bag last year. Yeah. They shipped last week or so. And you can um, run Circuit Python. Now, here's the interesting thing. It's been a year... And there's been a lot of Circuit Python updates since then, yeah. so you get the latest firmware, yeah, even more and stuff. your device does even more. So this is a little Circuit Python powered badge that also functions as a watch. Um, I think Scott had these on um, his deep dive. He did yeah. an unboxing. Here you can see the front and back. Um, works with Just update Python. the latest Circuit. I mean, I think it was four yeah. was out then. Now it's up to six. Cool. And also, uh, there's an unboxing. Uh, Alex was on our show and tell. You can also check out the um, Open Hardware Summit swag bag unboxing that has everything else. Deep dive with Scott this Thursday. We mentioned that before. News from around the web. Um, this was a roundtable from DigiKey for Pi Day. Pi Day. You can see a bunch of folks, including JP. Uh, this is a uh, contentful blog e ink display with Circuit Python and IoT. This is a Circuit uh, Sidetrad Maker Pi Pico and Circuit Python to measure soil ma- moisture. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi mouse jiggler. Um, sensor. The sound sensor stuff. Bell. We have More other Python. Pico projects um, that are coming in. Thermal yeah. cameras, thermal printers, displays. Yeah. Um, um, More people doing Circuit Python with, with RP2040s, which is cool. Yep. Pi Ladies uh, has some good stories on their blog. That's the Pi Quarter. We had that on the show and tell. Um, this is cool. This is a Chrome uh, REPL. So more people are doing web serial, thankfully. Web, web yeah. USB, long live it, but web serial is better. Um, people playing with Picos and, and off-the-shelf hardware. Space. This is cool. This is like a, like a plant-shaped or like an egg-shaped yeah. sensor. People love eggs and sensors. Those kind of go together. Yeah, and if you want to check out uh, Tim. Uh, He's doing streaming. Guys. You could check out the bitmap tools and the neat little dial uh, widget gadget thing that he's working on. Um, and then check out the rest. Uh, we have a uh, review that um, I think this Russian site did of the Adafruit RP2040. Feather RB2040. Cool. Tom's Hardware also did a review of it. Um, oh, that's a nice Pi base. Isn't it? Yep. Cool. Here is a very yeah. small version of a schedule library for CircuitPython. Um, you can use a Pi Pico to make an affordable stream deck. This is a 3D printed one. Here's an ESP32 OLED display with MicroPython. And more, more and more and more and more and more. And more, and more, and more, and more Kibos with CircuitPython. Kibos with CircuitPython. Zubos with CircuitPython. Um, we have a guide on how to do Wi-Fi with the Pico. And then Tom's Hardware also has an article guide on how to do it. So it uses CircuitPython, uses Wi-Fi, uses our Adafruit Airlift, and you can then get your... Pi online. Um, I had sent this to the team. Audacity 3.0 is released. Oh, yay. It's our favorite. We open use this for, audio. yeah. Cool. So we use this for all of the audiophile um, edits and more. Yeah. Um, one of the cool things about CircuitPython and Python and hardware is you can play Music. WAV files. Yeah. That's right. You can also play other types of files. But, but you also them. you often want to put them in the right format to speed things up. Yeah. There's that. that and we talked about that. High. We had some coming soons. Um, we're going to be talking about it on the show tonight. We have some new learn guides. And we are up to 306 CircuitPython libraries. Good one That's time. right. Um, check out the new boards and which ones are most popular on circuitpython.org slash downloads. And then we have some events coming up. PyCon USA is coming up, EuroPython, PyOhio, and then, of Still course... Still virtual, and then maybe throughout the summer we'll see some in-person events yep. popping up. And that is Python on Hardware News this week. Thank you, Blinka.